This video contains the exercise that follows up on the previous video on computing tangent lines. So if you haven't already watched that video, then it's probably a good idea to go through that video before going through this exercise. So the goal of this exercise is essentially to produce a graph that looks like this. This is a graph of tangent lines to a function x squared, and I think it's a beautiful example, yet another example, of an intersection between aesthetic design, so art, and mathematics, in this case, calculus. To me, this looks like some abstract eagle that is flapping its wings and zooming in for the kill. In fact, I wasn't sure whether it looked better with the white background or without any background like this. Maybe you can let me know in the comments. All right, let's get back to work. There are two exercises or two components to this exercise. The first is to create a Python function that returns a tangent line given three inputs. So a function itself, and this has to be the mathematical function, a SymPy expression, a point at which to compute the tangent line, so I'm calling that x sub a, and domain bounds. The domain bounds here I'm referring to, you know, the, the smallest and largest point on the x-axis. Okay, so once you've created this Python function, then you can use that function to create this graph. And this graph is generated using the function f equals x squared. You can actually see that in this black line here, that's the x squared. At points, for computing the tangent, so x sub a, ranging from minus 2 to plus 2. All right, so now, as with all of the exercises, this is your opportunity to pause the video, switch to Python, write some code, see if you can reproduce exactly this figure, this graph, or at least one that looks very close to it. And when you're ready, come back to the video, and then I will show you how I solved this problem. To produce that graph, I'm going to use the SymPy module, NumPy module, and matplotlib. So let's get started. I'm going to start by creating the function. So I'll call this compute tangent. That seems like a pretty good name for a function that's going to compute the tangent. So I said we need three inputs, the function, the point at which to compute the function, and uh, the bounds, which I'll call BNDS for the boundary points on X. So let's start by defining the derivative and values at point x sub a. So let's see. So we already have the function from the input. So we can compute the derivative as sim.diff of f. And then we need the value of the function at point a. And actually, I think I meant to call this x sub a the value of the function at point x sub a, and the value of the derivative at point x sub a. So I will call this fa equals f dot sub, so we are substituting for x the value of a. And now as I'm going along writing this function, you have to notice that I'm making some assumptions. So I am assuming that the symbolic variable in the function f is called x. So it's always important to keep these kinds of assumptions in mind. Okay, and then I need dfa, and that is df subs x at xa. So again, this is giving me the derivative of the function. This gives me the value of the function at point x equals x sub a, and this variable is going to give me the value of the derivative of the function at point x equals xa. Okay, so then we need to evaluate the tangent, tangent line. So let's see, so I need to create an x-axis vector on which to evaluate the tangent line, and that is going to be linearly spaced numbers between the, basically the first and second point in this vector. So here is another assumption. I'm assuming that this input is going to be a list of two elements. So we are going to go from bnds 0 up to bnds1, let's see, like this. And let's go in 200 steps. Okay, and so now I have all of the components that I need to create the tangent line. Now, what I could do is, you know, create another variable called tangent line and then return tangent line. However, 
because I only need to use this variable to return it, I'm actually not even going to create that variable. I'm just going to compute the tangent line directly after the return statement here. So you will recall from the formula that I explained in the previous video that the tangent line is created as the slope, which is dFa, times the x variable shifted by the point xA plus the intercept, which is the function evaluated at point x sub a. So that was f a. Oof, it's getting a little confusing to talk about all these f's and a's everywhere. All right, so let's run this cell. We don't get any errors. Now, I'm going to need to run this next cell in a loop in order to create a lot of tangent lines to plot them. However, before getting full on into the loop, I want to just run this code once just to make sure that it's working. So let's start by defining the function. I'll call that variable f, and that's going to be x squared. So now I haven't yet created x. Let's say x equals sim dot symbols and then x. So now what I need is a vector of x points. So I'll call that xx equals numpy dot lin space and let's go from minus two to plus two essentially because that's what I said to use for the value of x a in the slides. Okay, now it's no coincidence that I'm using 200 points here and 200 points here. In fact, I'm also making another implicit assumption that there's going to be 200 points to compute or to evaluate for the tangent line. Now, another way you could have set this up would be to directly import xx here and then get the tangent line directly from that third input. However, that's what the instructions say, and you know I always stick to the instructions. Anyway, okay, so let's try running this. So I'm going to get tan line, tangent line, equals compute tangent, and then we need to input f and x sub a, which I haven't actually created yet, but let's just say it's the value of 1, the point 1. And the bounds, I'm going to say that this is going to be x, x, the first point, and then the last point. Okay, so I just ran this cell, which means it called this function, and I haven't seen what the output is, but at least it didn't give me any explicit coding errors, so I'm already pretty happy about that. What I'd like to do now is make a plot of this function and this tangent line. And once I see those two graphs, then I will feel good about myself. And then I can go through and finally finish this exercise. So let's see, I'm going to convert this function into a evaluatable function. I'll call that f fun equals sim dot lambdify xf and that's going to be evaluated at all of the points in xx that I specified here. Okay, so now this is a vector of points of numbers that I can plot alongside this tangent line. So let's see plt.plot xx by f fun and then plt.plot xx by tan line and then let's see what this looks like. All right, very nice, very comforting. This looks exactly like the plot that we made in the previous video. Okay, so now I feel confident that I've done everything the right way here. So now what I'm going to do is run through a loop over all of the points in x sub a. Now, I haven't created a variable here for x sub a. However, it actually is pretty sensible just to use all the points in x to be the x sub a's. So I'm gonna say for, maybe I'll call this A. So for A in XX, what we want to do is get the variable Y, and that's going to be compute tangent. We input F, we input the point A, and we input the boundaries, which is XX, and then the first point and the last point. And then what do we do with this thing? Well, we want to plot it, of course. So I'm gonna say plt.plot, xx by y and let's see I, we can get rid of this and let's just see how this is starting to look all right this actually looks pretty neat it doesn't quite look like what i showed in the slides yet we're gonna make it look better but it already looks pretty cool 
So you can kind of see the function here, x squared. Let me adjust this plot to make this look a little bit better. So first of all, I'm gonna set the axis to be square, and then I'm going to change the axis limits to go from, how about on the x-axis? Well, it makes sense to go from minus two to plus two on the x-axis because of what we specified up here. And the y-axis, I think something like minus one to three is gonna look good. And now we don't need this axis to be visible, so I'm going to turn that axis off. And there's another one of these typos that I've made a million times. Hey, now this is looking great. This looks really nice. It's not quite perfect. It's not quite yet what we need because the colors are off, but otherwise the plot itself looks good. Okay, so now getting this plot to look exactly like how I created it is a little bit tricky, and I'm just going to show you what took me a little while to figure out. So I'm gonna specify the color. So now I'm gonna specify the RGB coordinates for this color. And the way that I set this up was to be ABS of A divided by three, ABS of A divided by four, and then ABS of A divided by two. And so essentially what this is doing is setting the color to be mostly blue and a little bit less red and even less green. And then the purpose of having this be ABS is, first of all, that color coordinates have to go from zero to one, so they can't be negative, whereas this looping variable A can be negative. And secondly, setting this to, to be absolute values is also going to produce a curve in color space. And that is how I got this to be a nice floating shade or alternating shades of purple, going from purple here down to it gets a bit black here and out here and then back to purple again as we get to numbers that are, or I should say intersection points that are further away from the origin like this. Well, that does it for this video. You learned about the tangent line to a function in this video and also in the previous video where I focused more on the math and the elementary implementation. And most importantly, you made another beautiful plot. And as I've mentioned in previous exercises where we make really nice looking plots, I challenge you to make a nicer, more beautiful, more interesting looking plot than this one. And when you make it, please post it to the Q&A forum so I can see it and give you the praise that you deserve.